High in the Himalayas, the tallest mountains on Earth, scientists say they've uncovered something that could rewrite the future of technology and global power. Hidden beneath these icy ridges lies a massive belt of rare earth minerals, the industrial gold of the 21st century. Think about this. A single mountain seam could influence who builds the world's smartphones, who powers tomorrow's wind farms, and even who wins the next generation of military conflicts. According to reports, this Himalayan treasure may hold more than 40 million tons of rare earths, potentially worth over $120 billion. But discoveries like this don't stay quiet for long. Almost immediately, India raised its voice, claiming that China shouldn't keep the fine to itself and calling for joint development. On the surface, it sounds like cooperation. In reality, it's a tug of war over who controls the raw materials that power modern life. And so the question emerges, will this discovery spark cooperation between neighbors or ignite a new resource conflict in the world's most dangerous mountains? So why is everyone suddenly talking about rare earths? Despite the name, they're not actually that rare. You can find traces of them in soil all over the world. The real challenge is extracting and processing them. And that's where the game changes. Rare earth elements are like the vitamins of modern technology. You only need small amounts, but without them, nothing works. They're inside your smartphone screen, helping colors shine. They're in magnets, powering electric cars and wind turbines. They're in lasers and sensors used by hospitals, satellites, and even fighter jets. Here's a real world example. An F-35 stealth fighter jet, one of the most advanced planes on the planet, needs nearly 420 kilograms of rare earths to function. That's the equivalent of strapping an entire motorcycle worth of materials inside just one aircraft. Without these minerals, you don't get stealth coatings, advanced radar, or high thrust engines. And this isn't just about the military. Every time you plug in your phone, watch Netflix on a laptop, or see a wind turbine spin in the distance, you're depending on rare earths. In short, they are the backbone of 21st century life, which is why the Himalayan discovery feels like more than geology. Whoever controls it could shape the future of clean energy, global trade, and even military dominance. Now here's where the story gets even more interesting. China isn't new to the rare earths game. In fact, for the past three decades, it has been the undisputed king of rare earth production. Back in the 1990s and early 2000s, while most countries ignored these minerals, China quietly invested in mining and, even more importantly, processing technology. By the 2010s, it wasn't just digging them out of the ground, it was refining them into the high-purity materials the world desperately needed. The result? Today, China controls about 60 to 70 percent of global rare earth mining and an astonishing 85 to 90 percent of processing capacity. To put that in perspective, it's like one country controlling not just most of the oil wells, but also nearly every refinery on Earth. And Beijing knows how powerful that leverage can be. In 2010, during a dispute with Japan over the Senkaku Islands, China reportedly cut off rare earth exports. Prices spiked, industries panicked, and suddenly the world realized just how dependent it was. Fast forward to now, as the world shifts toward electric cars, green energy, and high-tech defense, China's dominance gives it a strategic advantage that rivals oil in the 20th century. So when news breaks about a massive new deposit in the Himalayas, the world doesn't just see rocks and minerals, they see the possibility of China tightening its grip even further, unless someone else like India steps in. The Himalayan find isn't just another mining story. It's a discovery in one of the most sensitive and strategic regions on Earth. Chinese geologists say the deposit stretches across a belt nearly 1,000 kilometers long, with reserves estimated at 40 million tons of rare earths. If confirmed, that would make it one of the largest single concentrations on the planet. We're talking about resources potentially worth more than $120 billion, locked inside a mountain chain already bristling with soldiers, border disputes, and rival claims. Now here's where it gets complicated. The discovery sits in a region close to Arunachal Pradesh, an area claimed by both China and India. China calls it South Tibet, while India insists it's part of its sovereign territory. For decades, the two countries have faced off here with patrols, military standoffs, and even deadly clashes, including the 2020 Galwan Valley skirmish that left soldiers on both sides dead. So just imagine the tension when, all of a sudden, a massive mineral jackpot is found right near this contested zone. It's kind of like discovering a gold mine under the disputed backyard fence between two feuding neighbors. 
Both will want it, and neither will easily back down. Beyond borders, the location itself is strategic. The Himalayas are the water tower of Asia, feeding rivers like the Ganges and Mekong that support nearly 2 billion people. Adding rare earth mining here raises environmental risks, but also offers whoever controls it a geopolitical lever of enormous scale. For China, this discovery could cement its role as the world's rare earth superpower. For India, it looks like a potential threat right on its doorstep. The moment China revealed its Himalayan discovery, India pushed back hard. Indian media headlines called it unacceptable for China to claim full control, and some officials even suggested the minerals should be developed jointly, since the deposit lies so close to disputed borders. On the surface, joint development sounds cooperative, but in reality it reflects India's deep concern. If China alone exploits this resource, Beijing could gain even more strategic leverage over global supply chains, while New Delhi risks being boxed out of a resource found in its own neighborhood. This anxiety isn't new. India already imports most of its rare earth needs, despite having some reserves. What frustrates Indian leaders is that China not only produces more but also processes better, turning raw ore into the magnets, alloys, and high-tech materials industries depend on. In short, India fears being left in the technological dust. Add to this the history. The Himalayas are not just a mountain range for India. They're the site of war in 1962, repeated border clashes, and the bloody Galwan Valley incident in 2020. Each confrontation has left deep scars, and the discovery of valuable resources in the same region only raises the stakes. So when India talks about joint development, it's not really extending an olive branch. It's sending a message. We won't let China walk away with all the spoils of the Himalayas. This Himalayan discovery doesn't just add another chapter to the China-India rivalry, it supercharges it. Remember, these two countries are already locked in one of the world's most dangerous rivalries. They share a 3,400-kilometer disputed border. They're both nuclear powers, and their soldiers routinely face off in high-altitude standoffs. Now throw in billions of dollars worth of strategic minerals sitting right at that fault line. It's a recipe for even greater tension. For India, the fear is straightforward. If China controls the Himalayan rare earths, Beijing gains both economic firepower and military edge. Rare earths strengthen China's already dominant supply chain, making it harder for Indian industries to compete. And strategically, they fuel the very defense technologies India is trying to catch up with, from hypersonic missiles to radar systems. For China, however, the calculus looks different. It sees this as a natural extension of its decades-long investment in rare earths. Beijing likely views India's objections as political noise, but it also knows New Delhi could use this issue to rally support from the West. And that's where the rivalry spills into geopolitics. The United States, Japan, and Europe are all desperately looking for alternatives to Chinese rare earth dominance. If India positions itself as a counterweight, it could find powerful allies willing to back its claims, not necessarily out of friendship, but out of self-interest. In other words, a mineral deposit in the Himalayas could easily become the next flashpoint in the broader United States-China competition, with India caught in the middle but also seeing an opportunity to rise. What makes the Himalayan discovery even more explosive is that it's happening during a global scramble for rare earth independence. For years, the United States, Europe, Japan, and even Australia have been desperate to reduce their reliance on China. Washington has called rare earths a national security priority pouring money into research, recycling, and new mining projects. The European Union launched its own Critical Raw Materials Act, trying to build stockpiles and secure supply chains. Japan, scarred by China's 2010 export cutoff, has been investing heavily in alternative sources, including seabed mining. But despite all these efforts, one fact remains. China still dominates the industry. For example, even when the United States mines rare earths in California's mountain pass, the ore often gets shipped to China for processing because no one else has comparable refining capacity. That's why the Himalayan reserves look so important. If developed outside of Beijing's total control, they could reshape global markets. Imagine a scenario where India partners with the United States or Japan to process those minerals. Suddenly, the world has a counterweight to China's monopoly. Of course, that's exactly what Beijing wants to prevent. From China's perspective, letting rivals tap into Himalayan resources would be like handing over a chunk of its strategic advantage. So while most people see mountains and valleys, 
global powers see the next battlefield of supply chains. And in a century defined by technology, where semiconductors, electric vehicle batteries, and advanced weapons are the new oil, whoever secures these minerals isn't just winning geology. They're winning the future economy and balance of power. Rare earths sound like a miracle resource, but, you know, digging them out of the ground comes with a dark side that's often ignored. Mining and refining these minerals is messy, toxic, and honestly pretty dangerous. In China's own rare earth hub, Baotu in Inner Mongolia, entire villages have been devastated by pollution. A vast, black chemical lake sits outside the city, the byproduct of processing rare earth ore. Farmers nearby have seen crops wither, water poisoned, and cancer rates climb. Now, just imagine trying to mine rare earths in the Himalayas, a fragile environment already struggling with glacier melt, deforestation, and landslides. The region isn't just home to minerals, it's the source of rivers like the Ganges, Brahmaputra, and Mekong, which provide drinking water and irrigation for nearly 2 billion people across Asia. Any contamination here could ripple across entire countries, triggering food crises and water shortages. Then there's the human cost. Mining in high-altitude Himalayan terrain isn't easy. It means displacing villages, carving roads into pristine mountains, and bringing heavy military presence to already tense border zones. For locals, the promise of jobs often comes at the price of lost land, lost culture, and environmental destruction. So while governments frame the Himalayan discovery as a story of national strength and economic opportunity, the hidden question is, who pays the price? If the past is any guide, it's the people on the ground, and the environment that sustains millions far beyond the Himalayas. China isn't treating the Himalayan discovery as just another mining project. It's part of a larger strategy that Beijing has been refining for decades. Use resources, not just for economic growth, but as geopolitical leverage. Since the 1980s, China has quietly built the world's most advanced rare earth supply chain, from mining to refining to manufacturing high-tech components. This wasn't an accident. Beijing invested heavily, subsidized companies, and allowed the environmental costs to pile up at home. Also, it could dominate a field the rest of the world ignored. Today, that strategy has paid off. China controls about 70% of global rare earth production and an even larger share of processing. The Himalayas give Beijing another card to play. On paper, the rare earths could add decades of supply security ensuring that even if other countries try to diversify, China stays ahead. But more importantly, Beijing can use the mere existence of this resource as leverage. Just announcing the discovery shakes markets and reminds the world who holds the keys. China may also fold the Himalayas into its broader Belt and Road Initiative, building infrastructure, railways, and pipelines that serve both economic and strategic needs. By developing the resource under Chinese control, Beijing can extend its influence deeper into South Asia, right along India's doorstep. In simple terms, China doesn't just see the Himalayas as rocks filled with minerals. It sees them as weapons of policy, tools that can secure supply chains, pressure rivals, and reinforce Beijing's long-term vision of technological leadership. For India, the Himalayan discovery feels like a double-edged sword. On one hand, it highlights just how far ahead China is in rare earth dominance. On the other, it creates an opening, a reason for India to step up its own strategy. In recent years, New Delhi has been scrambling to secure critical minerals. It signed agreements with Australia, Argentina, and Africa to access lithium, cobalt, and rare earths. The government even set up a state-owned company, Kanij Bidesh India Limited, or Kabil, tasked with hunting for critical minerals abroad. Domestically, India is trying to modernize its own mines. In 2024, New Delhi announced new policies to boost private sector investment in rare earth exploration, signaling it doesn't want to remain dependent on imports. But here's the catch. Unlike China, India lacks large-scale refining capacity. That means even if it digs minerals out of the ground, it risks sending them overseas for processing, often ironically, to China. So how does India counter Beijing's Himalayan advantage? By turning to alliances. Already, New Delhi is deepening partnerships with the U.S., Japan, and Europe under frameworks like the Quad, positioning itself as a democratic alternative to Chinese dominance. The rare earth issue gives India one more reason to pitch itself as the balancing power in Asia. But make no mistake, India's challenge is enormous. It's like running a marathon when the other runner started decades earlier. Still, with global powers desperate to reduce reliance on China, 
India has leverage it never had before. In other words, while the Himalayas may favor China on the ground, they could give India a powerful diplomatic advantage in the race for critical minerals. The discovery of Himalayan rare earths isn't just a local story between China and India. It has the potential to reshape the world economy and the future of technology. Think about it. Every major industry of the 21st century runs on these minerals. Electric vehicles depend on them for powerful magnets and motors. Wind turbines need them for lightweight, efficient blades. Smartphones, satellites, and even advanced weapons like hypersonic missiles all require rare earth elements. That means whoever controls supply has influence over the pace and the cost of technological progress. If China tightens its grip, it could make electric cars more expensive in the U.S., slow Europe's green transition, or even hold back military modernization programs abroad. On the flip side, if India and its allies find a way to share in the Himalayan reserves, the competition could drive down costs and speed up innovation worldwide. The stakes are enormous. Bloomberg recently projected the global rare earth market could hit over $15 billion by 2030, but the real value isn't in the raw minerals. It's in the trillions of dollars of industries, from AI servers to clean energy, that depend on them. In that sense, rare earths are less like gold and more like the new oil. Whoever controls them sets the tempo for the global economy. So when we talk about rocks buried deep in the Himalayas, we're really talking about the foundation of the next industrial revolution, one where energy, data, and defense all converge. So where does this Himalayan rare earth story go from here? There are a few possible futures, and each one carries huge consequences. Scenario 1. Cooperation. In the best case, China and India recognize the shared risks of overexploitation in such a fragile region and find a way to jointly develop and regulate mining. That could turn the Himalayas into a symbol of scientific collaboration rather than conflict. But history tells us that trust between Beijing and New Delhi is thin, especially with border disputes simmering. Scenario 2. Competition. Far more likely is a race, where China pushes forward with exploration and India responds by building alliances, speeding up its own mining, and maybe even challenging Beijing legally in international forums. This wouldn't lead to war directly, but it could heighten tensions along the border and spill over into trade, investment, and even military posturing. Scenario 3. Resource Cold War. If rare earths truly become the new oil, the world could split into blocks, one dominated by China's supply chain and another led by India and Western allies. Just like the old Cold War was defined by nuclear weapons, the new one could be defined by critical minerals. The battleground wouldn't just be the Himalayas, it would extend to Africa, Latin America and the ocean floor, wherever rare earths can be found. Each path carries both risk and opportunity. But one thing is certain, the Himalayas have gone from being the world's roof to possibly becoming the front line of the next great resource struggle. At first glance, the idea of rare earths buried deep in the Himalayas might feel distant. Just another story about rocks and politics. But in reality, this discovery touches every one of us. The phone in your hand, the car you might drive in a few years, the clean energy powering your home, even the security of your country. All of it depends on these critical minerals. And right now, a silent race is unfolding in one of the most dangerous, contested regions on Earth. For China, the Himalayas represent a chance to lock in its dominance. For India, they're both a threat and an opportunity to rise as a global power. For the rest of the world, the stakes are even higher. Access to the raw materials that will decide who leads the next wave of technology and who falls behind. That's why this story matters. It's not just about China and India. It's about the future of technology, the balance of global power, and the price of progress. And while the Himalayas may seem eternal and unchanging, the battle unfolding there could decide the shape of the 21st century. So the next time you hear about a phone upgrade, a new electric car, or even a breakthrough in clean energy, remember? Somewhere high above the clouds, on the roof of the world, lies the mineral treasure that could make it all possible or hold it all hostage.